If you're trying to start a gym or want to start a gym in the future, finding a location is kind of a big deal. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the three things that you must look at before signing a lease. And if you don't, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. <laughs> This is part three of how to start a gym series. So if you haven't seen parts one and two, go back and watch them. They're linked down below. My name is Kale Lowen. I am the CEO of Gym Launch. And today I'm gonna walk you through the three things you need to check before signing your lease so you can avoid some major mistakes that I see some new gym owners make all the time that ends up costing them thousands, if not their entire business. Now, before I get into that, I have to address something that a lot of gym owners and investors think has to happen when they're looking for a location. I hate this. It typically does more harm than good, especially for smaller group training facilities. And it's this idea that you have to have a location in a shopping center with high visibility and a lot of foot traffic. But we gotta pump the brakes on this for a second. This is a huge mistake that I see tons of gym owners make. They think to themselves, I need frontage. I need a spot in a highly populated area where there's a lot of walk-by traffic. But frankly, for most group training facilities, you're just gonna be wasting your money you're going to have to pay exorbitant amounts of rent and the walk-in traffic is not going to offset that. Save your dollars there and put it into advertising that will actually get people into your door. Now, let's talk through the three things that you need to check before signing your lease. The first one is population density and trends. I know this may sound crazy, but it's very important. By now, you should have run tests on Facebook and Instagram to see which areas are the best to get you leads. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, see the second video in this series to learn more. If you haven't, it's linked down below. But there's one very important thing that you need to do in addition to running the ads. When a startup is going to pitch their idea to venture capitalists, the one thing venture capitalists want to see is what is this idea's TAM? TAM is known as total addressable market, which basically means how many people could your idea realistically help or be interested in? AK, how big is your market for this idea? The same thing goes with your gym. You need to know your TAM. To do this, you need to see how many people actually live within a 10 to 15 minute drive of your gym. Don't go past that. Most people are not gonna drive further than 10 to 15 minutes unless you live in the middle of nowhere and then you know your TAM is tiny. Yes, you wanna make sure you get great lead costs through your testing, but if you do that test and it's successful in the lowest populated area in your city, town, or county, you're not going to have the opportunity to expand like you think you might. So you wanna make sure that you're in a place with growth potential. You can also look up the population estimates to see if your area is growing or shrinking and what the future might hold for it. Now, I've linked a video from the US Census Bureau below down in the description that will walk you through how you can find those trends. Now, do you have to live in a densely populated area to have a profitable gym? Absolutely not. We have plenty of gym owners taking home six figures or more a year in places with less than 10,000 people. But if you have plans on wanting to grow big or even just understand your ultimate potential, the research will definitely help you understand that. The second thing, and one of the most overlooked components to finding a space is parking. Yes. You wanna get into a space as quickly and inexpensively as possible. But the first thing you should look out for is parking. You need to understand that as you grow and scale, parking can become a major issue that you'll have no control over. So when you're driving around places and you're looking at spots, you wanna make sure that the parking is not going to be an issue for the amount of members that could be there at any one time. If you're in a shopping center, look and see what businesses will be around you. Typically, if they're busy from nine to five, you shouldn't have to deal with too much congestion because usually gyms are gonna be busy during the off hours before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m. If you're looking at warehouses, make sure there is parking there as well. Do surrounding employees take the majority of the spots? Are there delivery trucks and 18 wheelers constantly in and out taking up space? That's the kind of thing you wanna look out for. Now, if you're wondering how many parking spots you actually need, an easy way to do the math for a group training facility is to take your session max capacity and multiply it by 1.5. And that's how many spots you'll need. For example, if your max class capacity is 20, you multiply that by 1.5, so now 30 spots. You need 30 spots to be able to hold that. And the reason for that is, if you have back-to-back -back sessions, you need to account for an overlap in people coming and going. But if you're starting a health club, a good rule of thumb is to have one parking spot for every 12 to 15 members. So if you plan on having 1,500 members, you're gonna need 100 parking spots. The third thing that you wanna look out for when picking out a facility is sound ordinances. And what I mean by that is, are you next to a company who will have an issue with either loud music 
or weights hitting the floor, or maybe both. Now, I have personally been in locations before where we are right next to a company that had a lot of very high tech equipment, and anytime weight was dropped, they would catch that on their equipment and it would mess up their measurements and manufacturing. So they came to us and were like, yo, you're gonna have to move. Obviously, we weren't moving, but because they were a tenured leaseholder in the location, they went to our landlord and almost got us kicked out. Were they dicks about it? No, I totally understand. They're just trying to do business, but either way, you need to look out for this. Now, we were able to negotiate and ultimately made adjustments, but it also affected how we programmed our workouts. It's also really important to look out for this if you are looking at a second story or higher location where you are above other tenants, because if you're dropping weights, it can do considerable damage to both the floor and cause serious sound issues to your neighbors. So make sure you do your due diligence prior to signing a lease. All right, let's do a quick recap. First thing you should do is look at population density in your area along with the population estimates. Is it growing? Is it shrinking? This will give you an idea of how big your target market is and could be in the future. Number two is parking. Do not overlook the parking situation. If you want members to use your services, you need as few barriers as possible to get them in and parking can be a big one. You'd be surprised at how many people get pissed off if they don't have a spot to park. And number three is to look out for sound ordinances. What you don't want to happen is move equipment in, do a whole build out and then have to relocate due to ordinance violations or tenant disagreements. That's the last thing anyone ever wants. Now, if you found some value in this, do me a favor and drop a comment below and subscribe to the channel. Literally your comments and subscription is our way of knowing that we're helping. So we always wanna know that we're helping and we're moving in the right direction. So the more comments and subscriptions that you give us, the more we know that we're helping. Because if we don't see it, then we need to change it up and we'll add different stuff. Also, if you wanna learn all the frameworks and strategies we've learned over the last seven years helping gyms build remarkably profitable gyms, I put together a free guide. It's called the seven money models we use to scale gyms to $100,000 per month like clockwork. It's completely free and you can get your copy by clicking the link in the description below. And if you are interested in working with us to help you fill your gym to capacity before you even open it, book a call with our team using the same link as the seven money models down below. Just make sure you have have a signed lease and we can get it rolling. Thank you for your attention and interest. I promise you I do not take it lightly. And remember, gym owners rule.